It is June at El Ta Contento near 17th. The cook slices clean through the belly of a watermelon. Sandia, Dia Santo, and honey bees grown in glistening temples dance away from their sugary hives. Ants in lines, beetles toward your red. If you are east, they are going east over and over toward your worldly, luscious, blushed fruit freckled with seeds. Roadside, my obtuse pleasure, under strings of lights, a printed skirt in grocery barrels, above park grasses on Sunday afternoon, to the moan and dolorous moan of swings. Ripe conjugationer of water and sun, your opening calls even the birds to land. And in Palestine, where it is a crime to wave the flag of Palestine, in Palestine, watermelon halves are raised against Israeli troops for the red, black, white, green of Palestine. Forever, I love you, your color hemmed by rind, the blaring juke and wet of it, black seed star red immense as poppy fields, white to outsing jasmine, again, all that green, sandia, dia santo, summer's holy, earthly, bandera of the ground, language of fields, even under a blade you swing your quiet scents in the pendulum of any gale. Men bow their heads, open mouth to coax the sugar from beneath your work dress. Women lift you to their teeth, sandia, Dia Santo, yours is a sweetness to outlast slaughter. Tongues will lose themselves inside you, scattering seeds. All over, the land will hum with your wild, raucous blooming. Araceli Skivmai was one of the poets whose work first stood out to me as I was really starting to read and write more poetry and I was trying to figure out what I envision for myself as a writer. The poem is an ode, and I think this is one of the poems that showed me that odes could work on multiple levels. So, of course, straightforward, it's an ode to watermelon, but there's so many layers to the poem underneath just the watermelon. Of course, there's, you know, the, the striking tribute to Palestine in the middle of it, but there's all of the colors, all of the textures of flavor, all of the people in the poem, um, bowing their heads, there's skirts in the poem. It just has all of these different levels of play and wonder that um, make it really fun and exciting to read aloud and also to consider just how immense something like a watermelon can be. It is playful, it is also meticulous in the sense that prior to this poem I hadn't considered that sandia could be flipped that way, could be turned into dia santo. And it's one of those things that once I read Araceli's poem, I couldn't, now I can't separate the two. It is, it is that clear and it, it, it's really beautiful in that way. It makes something that I had seen a thousand times, right? The first word that I knew for watermelon was sandia. And to now think of it as sandia dia santo, those two are, it's an inseparable idea for me now. You know, one of my favorite moments of the poem is, um, it happens in the first stanza, Araceli's writes, toward your worldly, luscious, blushed, fruit freckled with seeds. I could read those two lines in repetition forever and ever. They just, the sound sounds so good paired with one another. Um, and so the music of the poem compels me forward and so I'm willing to follow the poem as it makes its leaps. And in the moment where it shifts to Palestine, it begins with ripe conjugationer of water and sun. And there's something so, you know, I guess I wanna say profound, but profound doesn't really seem like it does it justice to think about sandia of watermelon, right? We talked about the, the kind of etymology of the word in Spanish of flipping sandia to dia, dia santo, you know, to turn watermelon into ripe conjugationer of water and sun, to break it down into its elemental form is just, 
you know, you do that in a poem and I'm willing to follow you anywhere. Aracelis could have taken me to outer space and I would have been right there.